Welcome back to the Paranorm Girl podcast. I am your host, Kristen. Today, I sit down with host of Paranormal, The New Normal, Jeremy Bryant. We get into some interesting talk about cryptids, including one of his favorites, the dog man, some personal experiences he and his family have had within the Bridgewater Triangle, and Jeremy has an interesting and different take on shadow figures, which we discuss as well. Thank you so much for listening, and please enjoy the show. I am so excited to welcome my guest for today. He is the host of the podcast, Paranormal, The New Normal. He is also a founding member of another podcast called Bracket Bastards. We might talk about that a little bit today. Um, Everyone, please welcome Jeremy Bryant to the show. Hi, Jeremy. How are you? I'm good. Glad to be here. Always down to talk some paranormal stuff. Oh, yeah. No, my, some of my favorite um, episodes that I've done are talking to fellow podcasters, and I love meeting other people in the in the field, as it were. Um, so, yeah, I, I guess uh, I just kind of want to jump into uh, your show because I have been catching up on some episodes, recently listened to, I think her name was Allison... Oh, oh gosh, now I'm blanking on the last name, but she was talking about the creepy pasta stories. Oh, Allie Fisher, yes. Yes, yes, that was a good one. Uh, what a neat idea to go in that direction, you know, talk about creepy pasta stories and, you know, what she was doing on her side. But um, you talk about a lot of things on your show. So maybe just for my audience, uh, what is your show about, if you want to describe it for us? My show, basically, I wanted to start it because I love podcasts and I. I, and I started on the other podcast you mentioned, Bracket, Bracket Bastards first, which, funny enough, Allie Fisher is the head bastard's daughter. That's where she's from. Oh. But, <laughs> but funny enough, um, I mean, I just, anything that has to do with paranormal, I want people to have a chance to voice their experiences in an interview where they don't feel like they're being critiqued or judged or laughed at for what they experience, because they shouldn't be, because this world the paranormal is becoming the new normal and that's what my show is about all right is is so that's basically why you started your show was that your line of thinking like that's the end goal to bring a little bit more normality to the paranormal yeah i mean because 50 years ago if you ask people oh have you ever heard of have you do you believe in bigfoot do you believe have you ever heard of a dog man have you do you believe in shadow people have you seen any in your house like They would laugh you out of the room 50 years ago if you asked them that. Now, if you ask people that, they're like, oh, yeah, I had a shower person in my house when I was a kid. No one ever believed me. Well, I believe you, and I want to hear about it because I want to try to figure out the mystery of all this stuff. Yeah, yeah, same here. Same here. That's exactly what I want to do. Well, what what does your show generally focus on? Like any particular subjects, or are you just down to talk about everything? I... Typically, I'm down to talk just about any and everything as long as it's supernatural or paranormal oriented. I, I don't have people coming to my show talking about the news or politics unless it has to do with paranormal, which sometimes it does. I mean, the UFO video is getting released by the Pentagon. That's kind of the biggest paranormal news we've had in the last five years. Yeah. And uh, what did Trump talked about something, too, that was paranormal related. But now I'm just drawing a blank, even though I was thinking about it earlier today but (laughs) i can't remember (laughs) okay okay well um is is your show entirely interview based or do you go off on your own sometimes and just talk no my show is completely interview based my show is about the guest i'm just there to lead the discussion and to possibly throw in some insight that i may have come across in my years of paranormal research and reading and all that but other than that it's about the guest I don't want to hear me go on a rant for an hour about a paranormal topic. So I doubt anybody else does. So I'm not going to do that. <laughs> well, some shows do that. They, they do all right. But uh, yeah, I like the format. I like that you're making it all about the guests. Um, I like that you, you in the episodes that I've listened to so far, yeah, you do kind of dabble in all of it. And I love it that you are speaking to real experiencers. You know, you don't... Uh, everybody kind of gets it into their head that oh i've got to get the you know the big the big uh, famous researcher the, the that one famous psychic i got to get the bit you know for the numbers the listen numbers but like i i think i'm the same as you like i love 
the true experience stories. I want to hear those. That's what makes it so exciting, you know, um, this whole this whole subject, paranormal subject. Um, I want to hear that stuff. Anyway, how long have you uh, been running the show? Well, I just I had my 14th episode coming out this week. So it's been about three months. I think I started in April with this show and it's just been I am now up to two episodes a week just because I've had an, a, tons of people reach out to me. I make connections and they want to come on and talk about their experiences. And I'm like, sure. I mean, Facebook, Facebook is full of people that want to give their experiences. And of course, I try to tie in other podcasters as well, because a lot of podcasters are in this field because they've had experiences. Exactly. Yeah. Well, what, what do you see for the future of paranormal, the new normal? Any, any big plans for the show? Well, actually, well, the whole month of October because of Halloween is going to be a big month I'm looking forward to. Oh, are you doing something special too? I mean, I am not a Halloween lover as far as a lot of people go. I mean, <laughs> my, my, my wife loves Halloween 10 times more than I ever can. But I am bringing back one of my most popular guests, Christopher Susi, because he told us first time about his three times seeing the devil, hearing the devil. And he's going to come back and tell me his most horrifying stories about things he's seen in mirrors. Ooh, that will be a good one. I love mirror stories. They're so creepy. That they is are. awesome. My wife hates mirrors. She, she, hates, <laughs> she hates mirrors because of stuff like that. And I've never seen anything in a mirror, at least that I could, that I would definitely say I saw. I mean, out of the corner of my eye, sometimes maybe, but yeah, I, I never have seen anything straight on that made me like jump back and like want to cover all the mirrors in my house, but yeah yeah i i i think i'm i'm a little um i i don't know what what the word is but like when it comes to mirrors although i i haven't seen anything either i guess i guess i'm a little careful with them like they say you should never sleep with a mirror you know facing your bed you should never have two mirrors facing each other but mirrors specifically go very, very far back in history, as far as the paranormal is concerned, the supernatural is concerned um, in all aspects. So, I mean, yeah, I mean, well, there's one right there that faces my bed, but I mean, I'm not, I'm not too worried about it, but <laughs> if, if, if they want to come take me so I can finally understand what the big deal is with mirrors and come take me and show me, but just let yeah. me come back at some point. It's all I ask. Let me come back at some point. <laughs> but the yeah. other, the other big plan I have for Halloween time is because of the because of me being on Bracket Bastards, I am going to be doing a Paranormal Creatures Bracket on my show. Two of them, actually, because I have so many people that are interested in doing it. I need to do two different brackets. I need to do two different shows of the same bracket, but with different people. So I am going to have one that's, I believe, podcasters and another one that's all investigators. Okay. Okay. I, I'm glad you kind of led us into bracket bastards. And, and this is where I'm going to sound like a complete idiot because I don't know um, exactly what you were talking about. Can you tell us a little bit about bracket bastards and we won't go f too far off into the weeds, yeah. but I want, I want to hear about it. Bracket bastards basically is a podcast. A friend of mine, Freddie Fisher started from his page on Facebook bracketology and a bracket is the same thing as a tournament. It's just it's usually like a bracket is usually used in sports terminology for like March Madness or basketball or any fancy sports has brackets as well. So, okay. and basically it's just every episode we take a 32 bracket of anything, whether it be Disney movies, uh, we haven't done it yet, but Jim Carrey movies. I mean, just anything you could, th any topic you could think of that you could find a way to make pick 32 out of or 64 out of, you can make a bracket and. That's where the show basically came from is his page on Facebook where he was doing the same thing where people on Facebook vote for the winners. But in our po on our podcast, there's usually five of us on each show and we do a round robin style and we just go through it and whoever wins wins. I mean, it, there's a lot of banter, which is the point. The, the, ban <laughs> the banter is the entertainment. If we were all just casting a vote without bantering, it wouldn't be entertaining at all. But what does everybody win? Nobody wins anything really, but uh, eventually... I mean, maybe eventually we might do a big 64 bracket of all the first 64 winners. Maybe. I mean, it'd be kind of hard because we go back and forth between like music and TV shows and movies and everything else, too. So it's kind of hard to put all that into one thing. But maybe we could do a movie bracket once we have 64 winners of movies. Yeah. Yeah. Or, do, you know, you could give away like uh, stickers or some, you know, some kind of cheap merch from from the show or something. You know, people love merch. They love it. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, it's, we could. I mean, that's that's all up to Freddie. I just 
participate I participate in that and I do help out with things once in a while, but Freddie Fisher runs the show and he's the head bastard. Okay. Okay. So yeah. So you were you're a founding member of that podcast. Do you ever get on and host at all? Are you a co-host? Yes, I hosted video a pre two thousands video game bracket back in I believe it was March or April, and I, I'll be doing a post a post two thousands video game bracket for two weeks um, in September. Oh, cool. Very cool. Okay, we'll have to check that out as well. Um, okay, well, I just had one other question, actually, about your uh, paranormal show. What was it? Oh, where? <laughs> I was curious, because it's so good. Where did the name come from? Honestly, I was trying to think of a name for my show, and I'm looking through Spotify and everything, and I'm looking at all the other paranormal shows out there, and I'm trying to, I'm just trying to think of something, like, and I... I the first thing came to my mind is paranormal is the new normal. Yeah. And one of my friends on Bracket Bastards actually was like, why don't you take out the is and just make it paranormal the new normal? And I'm like, I like that. I'm like, that works. And my my logo is actually designed by Jamie from Bracket Bastard. She she designed my logo for me and everything. So which I love that logo. I mean, I'm sure it's taken from somewhere as everything else is. That but. that cover art with the yeah. hands. Yes, yeah, so good. Such a good, yeah. Uh, great cover art. Great name of the show. Um, it, it's always so cool to see what names people come up with for their shows. Um, and surprising that it isn't already, you know, taken. Like yeah. Yeah, yours is so, it's so good. It's It's perfect. And it just really says what your show is about and I, I i just uh yeah i love that so i was just curious about that uh well you mentioned just a minute ago you know a lot of podcasters paranormal podcasters they do have their own experiences a lot of the reason that they get into this kind of stuff so i'm willing to bet you got some stories do you have any cool uh paranormal experiences you'd love to share i actually do have a couple but Yay. they weren't they, they weren't until recent they weren't until recent i mean I was one of those kids my whole life that looked for something, but never yep. found something. Yeah. So, I mean, I even got out of the paranormal, like when I became a teenager, because it was just, I mean, it, I didn't know anybody else. I was into it. I read all the books I could read about it in my local school libraries and whatnot. So I just, and the internet was when it, what it is now back then. So I just got out of it and I kind of started going into movies and TV shows more. And Eventually, I started listening to podcasts again, and that's what got me into paranormal once again. But until I met my wife and I was dating her, I never had any paranormal experiences. But the house she lived in is in the Bridgewater Triangle, which, as everybody who knows paranormal knows, the Bridgewater Triangle is just a mass of all different paranormal elements thrown together, basically. It's a crazy area to be in, and you can't drive down a road in that area without feeling like something's watching you. I mean, whether it's just the resident, like spirits of Native Americans that we slaughtered, or if there's other things that are more skin and bone out there, who knows? But I ha I did have an experience seeing UF a, a cluster of UFOs at her house down there. We were walking in from being outside one day where, as it was getting dark, and my stepson says to me, he's like, why are those stars moving? And I look up and I'm like, what are you talking about stars moving? I look up, I'm like, good question. But it they, they look like seven or eight star looking look like stars. I mean, I couldn't see any outline of a ship or anything, but they were seven or eight stars clustered together, all moving in the same direction at the same speed. And as anybody with above a high school grade knowledge knows, you can't see stars move just by staring at them. You'd have to you'd have to stare at them for hours and hours and hours to see a star move, actually. So the fact that these are moving within my eyesight and I could see them moving, it was just creepy it looks like uh eight you eight possible ufos moving together or maybe one big ufo with lights or something i don't know like they were moving all uniformly like yep. together like that wow i mean but it is also over the bridgewater triangle so it could just be sure. a, re a regular group of ufos just making their passes trying to see what's up i mean did you we, did you think about like any uh, um alternate possibilities as to what it could have been maybe like a like a drone show anything like that or are you um i guess i don't know the feeling in my head told me this is something i'm not supposed to be seeing right okay a and it was too because of how small they looked they were too far away for it to be a drone show or anything in our atmosphere i think i got you okay whoa that is insane yeah i don't have any any cool uh, ufo 
experiences, personal experiences myself. There was one thing, but it, it you know, it could have very well been something else. But I, so yeah, I love to hear uh, those types of stories because I, I, I mean, I'm, I'm assuming you do as well, but there is oh God, yeah. something out there. There, there, there absolutely is. It's so just egotistical of us to believe that we're, we're it, you know? Yeah. We, most people I talk to nowadays, they have to believe aliens exist to some degree because you can't just say, oh, they don't exist. We're the only smart, intelligent beings in this whole universe. Like that's, that's it. I mean, no, <laughs> it can't be. Yeah. Just the law of nature. It can't be because the law, I mean, there's always more than one. Always. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, statistically speaking, we cannot be it. We can't. And we and do we do we really want to be it in this big universe? Do we want to be the only species living? Because that just if we if we're doomed, we're doomed. Then there's no one coming to save us or help us. Like yeah, and what a, what a lonely thought too in an ever expanding universe that that goes you know far beyond what we could even imagine um, to be to be it. It's so lonely. I can't believe that. I can't believe that. It's just against everything I believe in to think that. <laughs> Okay, well, what uh, did does anything else happen in that area as well? Um, well, I mean, I can go on for days with my stories from my wife's family about things that have happened in that house to them. But I will say this because I I bought my wife a camera for her room so she can keep an eye on the kids while she's while she's in the bathroom or doing what she's got to do downstairs. And she has had the feeling before that she's been abducted by aliens because mm. she she will wake up in the morning and not and feel like she didn't sleep at all, but she was in bed the whole night, supposedly, but she didn't, she feels like she didn't sleep at all. But she doesn't remember getting up. So after I bought the cameras one night, it was one of those mornings where she felt like she didn't get any sleep. So she looked at the camera just to, for shits and giggles. And there was a big black shape outside of her second story window that was just standing outside her window. You couldn't really see details because it was dark out. But And there's no lights in that side of the house. So you couldn't see details, but there was some shape that was darker than the darkness of the night outside her window and then the camera just went staticky whoa whoa okay by by shape do you mean like like a, a ufo shape like blotting out the moon or like a humanoid shape what are i don't want to say humanoid but definitely definitely a creature shape of some kind figureish yeah yeah it was definitely Ooh. a figure of some kind and it was according to her it was big it was dark and it was hulking wow okay so when the cameras came back on when the static ended was she back in bed yeah i mean i tried telling her to do the whole like trick of wear your clothes inside out and then if they're if you wake up on the right side out then that means that you were abducted because it's been proven that if you believe you if you, if you believe you've been abducted and wait wherever you were to bed pajamas whatever have you turn them inside out before you go to bed and then if you wake up the next morning and they're right side out then because Aliens are going to try to hide that the fact that they did anything. So they're going to think that they put their clo your clothes on the right way that you're not going to notice. So if Whoa. you trick them like that, that's a little trick I picked up from, from another podcast, but I spread that I spread that message as much as I can. <laughs> that's a good idea. I've never heard that before. Yeah, it's a it's a good idea. And I'm not I mean, I'm not saying it's going to 100 percent guarantee that you've been that you didn't get up in the middle of the night sleepwalking and turn your own pajamas back inside out. I mean, who knows? But, <laughs> yeah. But, I've, done, I've done some strange things sleepwalking before, so. I mean, it's just, it's one option out there to try to figure out what's going on if, you, if you're someone who thinks they're regularly abducted. Sure, sure. Okay, well, um, did you did you have any other uh, stories you, you wanted to share? Any entity encounters uh, yourself? Yes. Um, so I live in, I live now in Gardner, Massachusetts. I purchased the house I live in, my first house, back in November. And my soon-to-be wife, then girlfriend, and her father were up here making, doing some repairs. I was at my old place, just went back home to go to sleep, basically, because there was no beds here yet, and I didn't feel like sleeping on an air mattress on the floor. Mm -hmm. And, I mean, they started hearing weird things at night. My wife went into the bathroom, and when she opened the door, a white mist, like, went past her. And basically from, so we just got creepy feelings at first. And then Thanksgiving time, my sister-in-law was here and she was sitting on our couch. She's a night owl. So she was up at like two, three in the morning and she's sitting on our couch and she looks down the hallway and she sees a shadow person or a shadow figure walking down the hallway, going into the kitchen and then basically repeating that cycle. And it would stand in the hallway and just stare at her. And then she would go in the kitchen to get some food. And there's a door that goes out to the garage basement area. And 
it looked like someone was trying to get in from the outside, but everybody else in the house is sleeping and my garage is all locked up. No one's getting in it. Okay. So possibly a spirit that knows how to turn a doorknob. Yeah. Yeah. Something Ma- uh, manipulating a, a physical, the physical plane like that is uh, interesting. Well, uh, on the shadow person, um, what do you, do you have any theories as to what those particular entities are? Have you thought about it? it? Oh, I, I do have a theory and I do put, I, I talk about it on my show all the time. Uh-huh. I've, I've had some investigators be like, that's not true at all. And I've had some investigators be like, I like that theory, but it's, it's always 50, 50, but basically I believe that when someone dies, that their spirits age the same way that we did kind of as humans. When you're first a spirit, you're a baby spirit and you don't know how to do anything. So you are just a white mist or a black mist. I don't know what that depends on, but, or some, just a mist of some kind of color. And maybe one you identify with in life. And that's all people see of you is that, or they don't see you at all because you're just, you don't know how to take form. And then as you get a little older as a spirit, I think you turn into a shadow person or what we consider a shadow figure because you can take a humanoid shape at that point, but you can't give yourself features yet. You can just be a shadow of a person, basically. Okay. I, I, I understand what you're saying. And, and that makes sense because, yeah, because if, if you're evolving or, or growing, as you would say, like, while you can't take on a, a physical, you know, form or body or anything like the shadow person, at least the stories that I've heard, those are the most defined shape and they are shapes people yeah. say you know talk about that in their experiences specifically like humanoid shapes too exactly yeah Which, interesting at that point they take shape and then my belief is once you fully master being a go- a spirit or a ghost at that's the point where you can become a full body apparition like ghostbuster style <laughs> okay okay yeah well that's an interesting theory that is uh, it's a little different but I, I like that so are you are you involved in any other way aside from the podcast any other aspect of the paranormal like like do you ever investigate do you just consider yourself a researcher and you just specifically research the heck out of different aspects i don't do investigating as much i mean i I investigated my own house, obviously, because I, I actually hired paranormal investigators to come to my house and like local ones. And I went with them through every room. So, I mean, I, I participated in that investigation and actually, okay, well, remind me in a second, but there's a story there that's actually creepy as hell, but, okay, okay. but I don't do investigations just because time constraints, because I do work a regular full-time job as well as doing the five podcasts I'm on. So I'm a busy person. So I, I don't, I don't have time to go out like searching out houses and whatnot, or, yeah, yeah. I mean, I would love to go Bigfoot hunting. I would, I mean, not, not physically hunting it, but I would love to go Bigfoot searching is more the word. Cause I'm not, I would never harm a Bigfoot, but unless it was trying to kill me, but other than that, they should be okay. protected. <laughs> protected species, put them on the list. Yes. I'm pretty sure they are. That's why the government blocks off certain nature areas. Is that your wheelhouse? Do you is that what you absolutely love to to talk about? And theorize is cryptids, Bigfoot. I like to lean more towards myself, like cryptids. I mean, I'm big on Bigfoot. I'm huge on dogmen. Dogmen are my. Mm-hmm. I oh. love dog. I love dogmen. Bread I and love, butter there. Uh huh. I love water monsters. I mean, anything physical, I love because I feel like physical stuff's gonna be the easiest to find and prove, like what it is eventually. Yeah. Versus which I think the government already knows where all this stuff is, and they're just not telling us. Do you think, like, uh, like basically they're just animals that haven't been discovered yet? Like, like some of the stuff that we're s- still have no idea is living at the bottom of the ocean. Like, are, are they that kind of physical, or is there something a bit more paranormal to them? Oh, I have a couple of different theories, depending on what creature, <laughs> depending on what creature you're talking about. But I mean, I've heard theories from other investigators saying that they're. They believe all these creatures are ultra terrestrial and they come in our dimension as they want, which I can't agree with that theory. I just can't. Okay. It, it doesn't seem to sync up to, in my head that that would be the case for everything. I mean, yes, I do believe aliens travel through dimensional travel because it's the easiest way to get to Earth. But other than that, I don't. I, Bigfoot, I have a feeling, was either Gigantithecus or 
something along those lines that's been here forever and we just didn't find it at first because we weren't everywhere in the world and people have seen it since the beginning of time so apparently it has to be here forever i mean there's a whole nother theory i have too about earth being a prison planet but other than that i'm not sure okay okay and and before i forget what was the creepy story all right so i told you about the spirit of my house well i hired investigators a little bit before christmas to come in and just see what they could find i mean it didn't cost me anything they were happy to do it so whatever i don't care and basically i'm following them we went to the kids rooms because they were getting rings in there a little bit so we went to the one my daughter's room and we didn't really find anything in there i mean the spirit box said a few words but it wasn't active like that like crazy and then we went to my son's room and we're in there lights off three of us in there all together with the door shut and all of a sudden, like they're asking the spirits questions with divining rods, spirit box, and all the other EKG meter, not EKG, whatever it's called, but and all all the other meters basically. And and at that point, it's just all of a sudden I start getting a cold feeling all the way down my spine, and my hair is just tingling. I'm like, guys, I feel something here. And then we're talking at that point about like since I bought the house, what I've done to it. And then I asked the spirit. Because the man, the man who built this house, who lived here before, who died before I bought it, Raleigh, I asked him, I'm like, do you like what I've done to your house so far? And then all of a sudden, in my right ear, the slightest, slightest, thank you. <gasps> and talk about one of those Scooby-Doo moments where you want to like jump in Shaggy's arms and run. But... <laughs> or, your, or your feet do that. You know, that's. I mean, I just stood there like, it was such an emotional moment, like such a mental moment. Like I had tears come my eyes, but I wasn't even sad or afraid. I was just like, did I just get talked to by spirit? Oh, wow. Yeah, that would, that would hit a little different. It did hit uh, yeah. very different, very differently. <laughs> oh, I, no. I came out of the room. My wife is like, what happened? You, you look like something happened. What happened? I'm like, I'll tell you later. <laughs> but <laughs> Oh, man. Okay. So, you know, with your background, you, you, you said you stopped really doing any paranormal stuff when you were a teenager because, you know, nothing was happening. But then, you know, once you met your, your wife, uh, you did start to have these experiences. So going from that nothing at all to, oh, now stuff is happening, that kind of trajectory. What do you do you consider yourself like a like a full on believer now or are you still skeptical about some things? Oh, I'm a full-on believer because I, I, the only things I'm really, I mean, actually, I'm not really skeptical, skeptical about anything because I just can't be. Yeah. With, with everything that this, that we, we discover new animal species every year in this world still, the gorilla was encrypted until it was discovered in the mountains of the Congo. So, I mean, the natives would tell stories of hairy men and they were talking about gorillas. And I mean, the Komodo dragon was encrypted before it was a real thing. Giant squid, same thing. We discovered the Greenland shark, what, in the last couple of years? And it's been alive for thousands of years. This one, the one we found has been alive for like 350 years, something like that. Like it's, there's too much out that we don't know enough about this world yet where we can say anything doesn't exist. Yeah, I, I'd have to agree with you on that. Absolutely. The only thing I'm slightly skeptical on is chupacabras. Oh, why so? I don't know. I mean, they kind of, they kind of fit into my alien prison theory on Earth, but... Other than that, like, I don't see how, I mean, yes, I know, and they've been seeing that region of Mexico for a long, long time, but I don't know. I feel like they might be just possibly animals with mange or something like that. Like, I don't know. It, there's not enough out there about Chupacabras for them to be, there's not as many encounters as there are with Bigfoot and Dogmen and every, and water monsters and every other creature we talk about in like our shows yeah yeah and you know what it's it's kind of hard to nail down a specific description of it too exactly like it's more generalized but every encounter that you hear about or read about they're all describing something just a little bit different did you happen to see the the news report that they did on it like it was actually on television where they were interviewing people and they were like and here it is on camera and they shot it and it was literally just like you said it it was like a chihuahua with mange or something it was like a hairless yeah <laughs> hairless dog and everybody was was seeing this thing thinking it was the chupacabra so interesting 
Are you into the paranormal, true ghost stories, Bigfoot and alien encounters, or high strangeness and conspiracies? Well, if so, then you should check out my podcast called Somewhere in Dreamland. My name is Ken Mark, and every week I interview authors, researchers, and experiencers alike in the fields of the paranormal, cryptozoology, ufology, and spirituality. So why not take a dive down that rabbit hole with me and search for Somewhere in Dreamland wherever you listen to podcasts. That's Somewhere in Dreamland. All right, Jeremy, so um, we're getting near the end of the episode. Uh, I often like to throw a couple of random questions at my guests, you know, keep you on your toes. So uh, I got a couple for you. Uh, first one, what is one paranormal topic that any one of your guests has made you change your mind about or, or at least think really hard about the way that you originally thought about it? Hmm, that's a good, good question, actually. I. Well, there's been a bunch of them because I am agnostic, which I don't believe in any religion per se. I just kind of want to hear it all out and not subscribe to any. But I've had several guests who have talked about angels and devils and demons and seeing hell, seeing heaven, like what happens when you die. And it's just some of the stuff just gets in my head. And I'm like, I can't shake it. Like, it, it's just something that is so believable. I can't shake it. Yeah, like like their experiences with it are just too believable. You you think there's something to it? Possibly. I mean, I still don't want to subscribe to any religion, but I'm definitely more spiritual of a person since I started the show than what I, what I was before it. Yeah, yeah. It's it's funny how that happens because I I think I'm I'm right there with you. Like I came into it kind of more agnostic about certain things, and then the more you learn, the more you hear. Yeah, it starts to makes you think. All right. Uh, second question. What is the most terrifying paranormal subject, in your opinion? And then what is the most terrifying non-paranormal subject? Most terrifying paranormal? I, I mean, I'd have to say the most terrifying paranormal subject is dogmen, because they are, they are so vast in numbers based on reports of people reporting them. And no one really understands where they came from or what their purpose is because they've they've always been here they've always been here i mean ancient egyptians had a god that was a dog man basically so they've always been here but what is their purpose are they just trying to live with us or are they i mean i've heard people say they're demons i've heard people say that they're just creatures like like bigfoot so i mean i don't know it's just it's terrifying because it's man's best friend but what do you what do you do when man's best friend stands up next to you? <laughs> Taller than you. Yeah, exactly. OK. All right. What's the most uh, terrifying non paranormal subject? I'd have to say the government. I mean, the government hides so much from everybody. And they they're I mean, they have reasons supposedly for not telling us certain things. But why? Why? That's that's the scary part is why aren't they telling us these things? What should we know that we don't know? Yeah, yeah. What's what's being hidden from us, you know, for our quote unquote own good? What is it? Exactly. Yeah. All right. Uh, last question. Podcaster question. Who is your dream guest? Well, I already had one of them and his episode will be coming out this coming Friday. I don't know when this episode is going to release, so maybe be out by then. But um, and that is Mark Maskey of Small Town Monsters. I already got him on and interviewed him this past week and the episode will be releasing in about five days. And the other one who I'm hoping to get in August, if everything goes to plan, is Derek Hayes from Monsters Among Us podcast. Ooh, that would be awesome. I've listened to that one. That's cool. He would be great. That is the podcast that got me back into the paranormal. Nice. Okay. All right, Jeremy. Well, uh, let my listeners know where they can find and follow you and where they can check out your show, which again, for the listeners is called Paranormal The New Normal. Well, I have a group on Facebook called Paranormal The New Normal podcast group. And it's basically my main hub for where I put I post every show I am on on there all five shows I'm on continuously. And any show I guest on I post there as well because I guest constantly on shows so it's just it's what i do and i love podcasting so you can find out anything you want about me there you can feel free to message me there if you want to be on my show and if you have experiences yourself message me i 
I've never turned anybody away from being on my show. I just, it's not something I'm going to do unless I really believe they're making things up, which is hard. I don't think anybody's going to just come try to mess with me because they can. <laughs> like, yeah. just, I, I don't, I like to think humans are better nature than that. But, but you can also find me on Twitter and Instagram as at Juggalo Bastard. You can fi- find me on there. And you can also find me on Facebook as Jeremy Bryant. But join the podcast group. I post fun little interesting things in there all the time, previews. I post news stories I find that are believable off Facebook, which, you know, that's, that's a hard thing to find, but <laughs> a lot of them are believable, but I post ones I think are believable if they're paranormal related into my page as well. So it's a growing community. Come join. I get requests to join the group basically almost every other day. Awesome. I, I think I did just join. I'll have to double check and be sure to be in there. Um, I think you did. I think. Yeah. You did, but... Okay. And then where can people listen in, uh, to the show? Anywhere podcasts are found, I am on seven or eight different podcatchers at this point. Spotify, Amazon, Apple. I'm on I'm on pretty much anywhere podcasts are found. I, I'm on. Okay. Okay. And before we close, did you have a final thought or any advice you'd like to leave with us? Always be looking for what you don't think is out there, but actually is. When you're driving, always safely keep an eye in the woods on the side of your car because you do not know what may be watching you as you're driving by. Could be a dog man, could be a Bigfoot. Could could be an alien on a pee, on a pee break from his UFO. Who knows? <laughs> All right. Thank you so much, Jeremy. Uh, this was a lot of fun. Thanks so much for coming on. Of course, of course. Thanks one more time to Jeremy Bryant. He is a real supporter of The Experiencer, as you've heard today. So if you've got some stories to tell and want to share it with someone who is going to listen, understand, believe, Jeremy would be a good one to reach out to. Also, if you are interested in what the flip side of this conversation might sound like, check out Paranormal The New Normal's Feed Tomorrow. Jeremy and I did a back-to-back switcheroo, which was so fun and different. Don't think uh, I was quite as well-spoken on cryptids or UFOs quite like he was, but I gave it a good old Paranorm Girl try. So go give that one a listen. I feel like I have not done an update recently on my astral projection project. I have been giving the wake back to bed technique a try. I can't report any real success just yet, but something strange is happening that I wanted to include in this public record here. Since I've begun implementing this technique and really setting my intention to accomplishing an OBE, I've actually started waking up randomly multiple times every night and being propelled to walk through my dark house. It's not sleepwalking as I'm very much aware that I'm awake, but there is this not so pleasant feeling of being watched and not being alone. Um, I can't explain the need to get up out of bed during these wakings to walk around a dark house. My body may just be having a hard time adjusting to the WBTB uh, method and kicking up some insomnia. Unfortunately, if that does not change, I will have to try another technique because the way these middle of night adventures are making me feel a bit of fear and wariness during them is not conducive to a pleasant astral projection should it occur one of these days and then the additional fatigue throughout the day so no bueno you know so I'll keep you posted on that if you have not done so already please leave a rating and review wherever you're listening man does it help the show you guys another way to support is by becoming a patron There are multiple tiers that you can join now for three, five, and ten dollars a month. Receive a shout out and monthly bonus content on all tiers. The five and ten dollar tiers offer invites to the private Facebook community and book club launching this October. And that ten dollar tier gets you some merch. Yes, baby, yes. That's it for today. Meet you back here. Tuesday for one of our regular topic episodes. We'll be talking mediums, specifically dudes. Good stuff. Until then, stay safe, keep the nightlight on, and sleep with one eye open.